This Week in Startups is brought to you by LinkedIn. A business is only as strong as its people, and every hire matters. Go to linkedin.com slash twist and get a $50 credit toward your first job post. And Squarespace. Check out squarespace.com for a free trial, and when you're ready to launch, use offer code TWIST to save 10% on your first purchase of a website or domain. Hey everybody, welcome to This Week in Startups. We have a jam-packed, and when I say jam-packed, I mean jam-packed news program for you today with two of the great reoccurring guests here on the program. We've done almost 800 episodes, and I think that gadget guy Dave Matthews has the crown as the most frequent guest. Yep, I'm, I'll be accepting my crown. Absolutely. Um, steak meal, I hear, is, is on tap as well. So, yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, uh, and, and it's not the only crown that Dave Matthews has. He is also... Uh, the leading creator of the most failed hardware device in history, the QCAT. QCAT was a lovely device. I also worked on the team, which won an Emmy for another device called Slingbox. So Correct. very happy with and all he, of their inventions. They're all my babies. I this, love them more and more every day. This is what I love about you. I break your chops sometimes on the program, but you love it, number one. And you are so resilient, and you understand that as a creator of things... Not everything is going to work out. And you got to get up there every day and go back to work, just like uh, Stockholm Syndrome, I think. Correct. Exactly. You keep coming back to the program for me to talk about the QCAT. You guys can all look that up. But at Burning Man, yes. you brought an entire 747, or yeah. half a 747. Yeah, my team and I, we, we bought a 747 out of the Mojave, which is generally where planes go to die. In yeah. fact, in America, the last 747 flights just occurred in November, I heard December. That. Right. There's so, one... It, there's still going to be flights, though, right, there's from still, other countries. Yeah, British Airways has one. Yeah. Um, you've got uh, Korean Air has one. Yeah. But we have, at Burning Man, we have the last domestic flight of a 747. Correct. So it's amazing. And you uh, spent millions of dollars. Hundreds of thousands of dollars. Hundreds of thousands yeah. of dollars. Moving a plane to the middle of nowhere to turn it into the largest moving art piece. Yes. And we're raising money for this. And we need volunteers. If you want to go to the Mojave and tinker on an airplane... This could be your summer. All right. Ari's just right now confirming the fact of why He'll never go to Silicon Burning Valley Man. is hated. <laughs> Millions of dollars to put a... Hundreds of thousands. Hundreds of thousands <laughs> to put a decommissioned plane in the middle, middle of the desert yes. so people can dance in. With Elon Musk, you know. Yeah. We're all hanging out there together. Absolutely. Even you're there. All the players are there. Yeah. I, 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 as far as I know, Elon has never been to Burning Man. Um, and, uh, <laughs> nobody, and that's my story. I'm sticking to it. Nobody's him ever been to anything. Many I've times never been to anything. At the, at the sex camps. The three times I told there. you I was at... Please don't bring that up. It's the most ridiculous story <laughs> ever. We haven't Literally even got, like, haven't gotten five minutes in yet. About five minutes in, and then already the fake news has emerged. All right. <laughs> Speaking of the uh, real news, Ari Levy is here. Uh, great job on the Bill Gurley story. I really like that feature that you uh, started or ended the year with. I'm not sure when that came, uh, the ended publishing. the year with. You had a you had a little cameo in it. Little cameo in yeah. that. Yeah, it was a good story. Uh, what was Thank the reaction you. to the uh, big Bill Gurley story? And what are, what's your thoughts on him in the uh, history of venture capital and sort of what he is at his core? I'm curious. Well, what did you I learn mean, from doing the piece? I think um, you know. Uber as an investment represents one of those all-time investments. There are, yeah. you know, maybe seven to ten of them um, that we could, you know, reel off of the top of our head over the last twenty to thirty years. Google, Facebook um, come to mind. Exactly. Um, Amazon. Amazon. Um, so this is one of them, um, and it certainly looks like it's the most dramatic. Yeah, there was a lot of drama around Facebook, but sure. not to this extent, not to the extent where you had uh, founder ousted and, you know, founder sued. And so the, uh, add up all of the pieces and you have this, you know, one of the most remarkable investments ever and one of the greatest dramas ever, greatest right. is, you know, uh, uh, is subjective. Um, and uh, and you end up with a picture of, of someone in, in Bill Gurley who has you know, the, the, there's the highs and lows. I think, um, yeah. you know, uh, the, we, we titled the story when $8 billion is yours to lose. Um, you know, sucks to be you. Uh, but, high class you know, problem, high but class. it also is hard to sleep at night when your the number one investment you'll ever have in your life is going through that kind of turmoil. What What's your take on uh, Dara's job in the first X months at Uber? It seems like the drama's ended. I mean, every day that Uber's out of the news is a good day for Uber. Right. Um, you know, it's hard. 
I don't have great insight into what's going on operationally, which again is probably a sign they're doing a pretty good job. One thing I've noticed just as a user um, is that prices have gone up pretty dramatically hmm. um, over the course of the last six to eight months. I, I feel like you know, for, for my purposes, they've uh, gone up, I would say, 60 to 70 percent. Although the, um, the what's the ride sharing, the not, the... Pool, the pool, but there's the pool um, express. I think where you can like oh, you go to a specific you, yeah, and you might not place. get dropped off right at your house, but uh, yeah. you know, and maybe a couple blocks away. Um, that's actually quite a good deal, but there's a lot of very variability in when you. I love that uh, yeah. deal. Yeah, you, and also that's what you should be doing. I always want to uh, have the driver go in the direction I'm going. I don't mind crossing the street or going to the corner to make my own ride more yeah. efficient, save my own time. But this yeah. is from you living in New York where you always cross the street to pick up the cab yeah, in the exactly. right direction. Right? Yeah. And everybody else needs to be educated. Yeah. Yep. <clears throat> Ridiculous. People have lost their yep. minds. If they think like going around the, because sometimes you'll get the Uber time and it's like, it's going to take 17 minutes to get there. Yeah. But if you just, Pick it up in the right corners. Yep. Right. Well, now you're not to twelve. In the uh, you know the the Bart's I pick it up at Bart West Oakland. Um, you know, between well yeah somewhere in the, the six o'clock six six thirty area, and um, it's a it's much faster if you actually get it at one of the adjacent corners. Wait, uh, do you commute with it um, sometimes? No, so I I live in Alameda. Um, oh, and I love from, Alameda from West Oakland. Uh, if I do the express pool, it's like three fifty. What? Um, wow. And uh, so again, you know, it could get me there in ten minutes. It could get me there in a half an hour. Um, so it is it. absolutely fascinating um, what's going on with uh, I think Dara's job there. All good news all the time. I mean, he's really stacking the deck with really a deep bench, and I think this sort of two point oh. Uh, sort of approach of just bringing in a lot of people from with a lot of experience is going to pay off. So I'm, I feel pretty good about it. All right, let's get right into it. Um, I, I Putting Trump aside, we'll try to have this be a light Trump episode. Cryptocurrency has gone insane. I wrote a piece on Monday. I don't know if you guys read Beautiful it. Beautiful piece. Thank, Thank you for you. writing that, Jason. Thank just, you so much. <laughs> just trying to give people just like, I don't hate crypto, but it's so obvious to all of us who have been through any cycle that there is a lot of scams going on and that if you took the top 10 crypto projects, I did a little exercise, I got rid of the last three digits and their market caps. And that put like, you know, whatever, Bitcoin at 150 million and, you know, Ripple at 50 million. And I just looked at it and I said, you know, if I was investing in those companies at those prices, if they were companies and that currency was if you part drop three of, zeros, I would drop three zeros. Right. And I would say that's probably the zone in which I would invest. Like, you know, like Ripple at a $50 million company with no, I think Ripple has no revenue. They may have some partnerships or something. Well, the company has revenue. It's the, it's maybe no, the company has revenue. It's like the what, one or two million. Uh, I would say it's significantly higher than that, but in the million, yeah. but it's the, it's the, the, the companies that are using Ripple aren't using XRP. So, right. Right? so it's the currency itself is sort of sitting on the sidelines while right. the company is building this. And thing. there's no explanation for why XRP is worth anything. Right. And uh, Noriel Rubini, am I pronouncing that correct? Mm -hmm. Just basically said, listen, the, the actual value of Bitcoin is zero and it's the value is only what people put into it. And we saw the 19,000 dip below 8,000 today on the Bitcoin. Dave, you've been deep into crypto from the beginning. No, I've been <laughs> vehemently against crypto from the beginning. And well, I mean, you've been aware of it. Aware of it, yeah, of yeah, course. So you're pretty knowledgeable on this. Yeah, so what is your take on half of the market cap of all, because you can, on Coin Market Cap, which is like one of the most popular websites now, and who knows how accurate it is, that's yeah. the other problem. <laughs> the data is all manipulated, right. probably, uh, as well as the transactions we find out. It's gone from, I don't know, $850 billion market cap for all the currencies they track down to 400 and change. Yep. What's your take on this? Half the money's gone. Gone. Where did it go? It was all hyped up on hope and dreams. If you think about what, in the past, gold was the standard for money, right? And yeah. The U.S. Treasury in, what was it, 1970s, they said that the gold will no longer back the dollar, mm -hmm. dollar for dollar. Yeah. So the thing that kept the dollar alive is the U.S. war machine, Right, mm. America, F yeah. Yeah. So when you talk about crypto, they've made an algorithm to generate tokens, and those tokens get increasingly hard to calculate, yep. which is why people are buying 
that started with PCs, then it became video cards. Now it's these special built ASICs. And ASIC is a computer made just to do math. Hmm. These computers do math. They're selling on eBay for tens of thousands of dollars. Video cards from NVIDIA, you can't even buy anymore. Yeah, and those cost low thousands. Thousands of dollars, right? Um, And then meanwhile, the the currencies, like even um, Ethereum, uh, Ethereum, 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 yeah. Ether, the, Ether. Is yep. the we, coins or whatever tokens with Ethereum. Um, so, so they built, I thought, project. which was very clever. They built a system to build other uh, applications on top of it. And at the 747, we have TED style talks. We mm-hmm. um, we have intelligent people come and they present their concepts. And we had a talk with some of the founding team of Ethereum. And they said that they did not expect other people to build tokens on top of that framework. Ah. They expected the framework would be Ethereum and the tokens would be their own tokens. Right. So here we have uh, enabled the enablers. <clears throat> right. And now it's just run out of control. The ICOs are costing people their savings. At Thanksgiving and Christmas this year, that was the major conversation that I had with people that... In your family who are civilians. Family or friends of family. Non-technical non-technical civilians. Non-technical people. Um, and on January 15th, I expected all the traders when they got their bonuses in New York, actually 15th was a holiday. So the 16th, when the banks reopened, I thought the market would run up and down and up and down and all the pumping and dumping, everything that, that you know from your Silicon Alley days yeah. from the web com bu- bust boom, yeah. era. Boom and bust. And yeah. because of Sarbox and a lot of things that yeah. have gone in place now to prevent that, I thought it would run rampant. But instead, the opposites happen. Everything has completely tanked. Right. And is it because of... Uh, um, you know, Silk Road went down, which was an outlet to spend these coins. Mm. Um, there's no good way to redeem Bitcoin. Right. And um, the Starbucks CEO or chairman, rather, um, he said that there will be a crypto, he thinks. Sure. And maybe they'll help legitimize it. But no one really knows what the, the winning crypto would be. Yeah. Our CNBC has obviously <laughs> had to cover this. Yeah putting uh, Bitcoin prices on the ticker. People are demanding it. I think maybe it was Jamie Dimon or somebody was like, enough, stop asking me about it. You guys are covering it too much. Is CNBC covering it too much or not enough? And what's your take on this? Essentially, since you cover the financial markets and technology, this shadow casino and or currency trading platform that's emerged, is this an absolute lasting phenomenon or is this going to be gone in a year and i'm going to punt on your first question about whether we're covering it too much um what's the vibe inside (laughs) i mean be honest like when you're in the office are there like four people at this desk saying hey can we tone it down and then four people saying hey listen we have to cover it more because civilians are putting their money in how do you how does one come to the decision um i will say there is a um there is a extreme thirst amongst our readers um, for all things Bitcoin and crypto. Um, So, you know, we track how our stories do. Um, I pay less attention to how the, the, uh, you know, the television channel does. It's it's not not my side of the shop. Um, When we, when it's a big day for crypto, when it's something that's in the news, there's a big, there's a big move in the currencies and the market, or there's a big news story. Um, readers just huddle around those stories. Um, and so we know that because we see the data and we see how the, how it's, you know, how traffic spikes, uh, towards those stories when we publish them. Mm -hmm. Um, so, you know, it's our job to, um, write smart stories for them, not just feed the beast with what is Bitcoin doing? What's XRP doing? What's Ethereum doing? And, you know, so you want to be considered you're, you're, you're adult journalists at CNBC, old school adult journalists, who are trying to uh, figure this out on behalf of the readers and listeners. Yeah. So, you know, I think it's, it is uh, beneficial for us to dig into what's going on at Coinbase, how they deal with, you know, the, the surge in transactions, um, a company that clearly does not have the infrastructure to deal with the kinds of transactions that, yeah. that, are, that are going through their pipes, and they acknowledge it, and yet there's no other place to really transact. There are a few other exchanges that have even worse infrastructure. Uh, you have daily limits on the amount of money that you can get out. Mm. Uh, so you, you have a run on the bank, except, uh oh, we can't get our money out. Um, yeah. No problem getting it in. No problem getting it in. Um, Fascinating. And, uh, and then, you know, you also have just, you have this entire sort of ecosystem around ownership of the assets, uh, regarding what's going to happen come tax time. Uh, what's, and that's a very interesting one in and of itself that, uh, I was reading on the Reddit subred, uh, subreddit, the Reddit subreddit for Bitcoin and crypto, uh, people had started covering that the crypto kids are like, wait, 
I have to give third. I sold my Bitcoin and I bought Ethereum. Then I sold that and I bought this other currency all in the same, you know, two weeks. And he's like, wait a second. I sold it. I had a gain. I have to pay tax on that. And then I had a gain on the next one. I got to pay tax on that. And then I had a gain on the third one. I got to pay tax on that. I've got to pay taxes three times. This sucks. Thank God I just had this massive loss and now they... Well, yeah. So, I mean, basically like all these kids who bought this currency, they don't even know how tax law works. And the IRS has been very clear on sale, taxable event. So if you're day trading this and you've got massive gains, you're, you're going to need some losses to offset it. But that does seem like a maturation. There were uh, a couple of ICOs that have imploded. BitConnect, mm -hmm. which was a, it looks as though it's pretty clear this was a multi-level marketing fraud. Uh, and that blew up. And then there was another ICO out of, um, I think, Texas. Texas, the bank. The bank yeah. that was... Arise Bank. Arise Bank. And this is an interesting one. Or unpack it a bit. Like the SEC has just basically said, uh, the headline on the SEC website said ICO scam. Yeah. They used the words ICO scam next yeah. to each other. Yeah. So Arise... Um, a company in Dallas, I mean, frankly, no one had ever heard of them. They didn't They didn't go through any of the normal channels that you go through to, to set up an ICO. So Telegram is the, you know, is the go-to place uh, to market your, uh, to market and build an audience for your ICO. The anonymous had, chat app. Exactly. They had no Telegram channel. Um, I, you know, put in emails to, to several crypto investors who I communicate with, never heard of it. Hmm. Um, so it looks like what happened, they, they, had, they had said that they wanted to raise Five to six hundred million in an ICO, which would have been twice the size of the the biggest one to date, which I believe was Tezos. Or, Tezos, you know, yeah, they were um, on the another yeah. catastrophe. Um, well, I don't know. Tezos has still got all the money in some Swiss bank accounts. So. Yeah, yeah, no, the 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 technology m may have an opportunity to be built. It's just the story to date <laughs> has been. Uh, a we may build the technology, <laughs> um, uh, but but Arise, uh, you know, they had they had said they wanted to raise five to six hundred million. They hadn't gone through any of the channels. They had no evident team. I think it was a pair of brothers from Dallas. Um, and it looks like the SEC just got wind of the fact that they wanted to do this. And they huh. said that they had purchased uh, an FDIC-backed bank. Uh -huh. um, which they hadn't. And, which they hadn't. Um, Oops. And so the FDIC gets wind of this information and is like, it's pretty evidently not happening and this is a fraud. And so we're going to we're gonna sue them and we're going to put yeah. out a press release. Um, the pe people I talked to that day, I was thinking of doing a story. And the people I talked to who, again, know crypto, were saying, it, we've never even heard of these guys. It looks like, I mean, it, you know, there's low-hanging fruit, and then there's a rise bank. Yeah. Um, and this was just an obvious, all right, if SEC wants yeah. a win and a banner, here's one. And I also noted um, that uh, Dave BitConnect, which has that crazy viral video of everybody on stage yelling and screaming, an attorney general, as I predicted from a, you know, city that's not New York or LA or San Francisco or DC, somewhere in Florida, seven people uh, have joined this attorney general's mm. lawsuit, this, I guess a class action. I don't know if attorney general from a state can do a class action. Anyway, there's an action and they listed the seven people and how much money they lost. And now an attorney general from uh, Tallahassee, Florida, wherever it is in Florida, is gonna get her pelts on the wall, I think it's a she, and, and when you look at it, it's like this person lost 20,000, this person lost 50,000. And the top two, I think, were like 150 or 200,000. Wow. And you can be sure if a rich person lost 200,000 and it was 1% of their net worth, they would be so embarrassed by doing something so stupid exactly. as sending it, they would just never go to an attorney yep. general and say, I want my money back. They would just write it off and make 5% in the market or their bonds this year and then just make it back. Who yep. cares? Lesson learned. These are probably people who this was their life savings or a significant significant portion of it. That's my handicapping of it. I don't know it yeah. for a fact. Same thing happened in 99, 2000. Yes, it was people who couldn't afford to lose the money who then yep. came at it. What's your take on, we know these ICOs are largely scams, but what's your take on Bitcoin as a lasting value? Because there is a group of people who say, listen, even though they were first up the hill, it has not gone away. Yep. It has not been hacked. Sure, people's computers can be hacked, the exchanges can be hacked, but Bitcoin itself, in fairness, has not been hacked, correct? Yeah. And so maybe it should be a long-term store of value, and if it went below 8,000 today, it peaked at 19, that's not unprecedented in its history. It's lost 70, 80% of its value. Will it come back? Well, Is it lasting? And think about what you just said. You said, will this be a long-term store of value? Yeah. That was never what this was intended to be. Okay. It was meant to be an exchange. It was meant mm. to be a way to have a public ledger uh -huh. that could be audited. Got it. So what that means is AWS, when I build instances for my startups or companies I advise, 
that data is private. Hmm. And the whole idea with the blockchain goes back to, remember Whoopi Goldberg and Flues all oh, over yes. New York? Yes. Talk about Flues. The banners were, this billboards all over the yeah, city. Yeah, in the dot-com era, there was Flues, which was a virtual currency that you could earn and then use for other things. So yep. I, I'm not sure exactly how they incentivize people, but if you bought something, you, might, you got some Flues. It was airline miles. But Whoopi Goldberg was a spokesperson. She got paid a million or two million bucks, or who knows what it was. Hmm. We can pull up Flues uh, if Austin, our uh, uh, editor here, gets on his... Uh, uh, gets, I don't even know the video you, jockey gets on it. If he types like Flues ads, Whoopi Goldberg, internet, we get a great internet visual archive here. archive for this one. It's this definitely, goes way back. No, it's Flues. Is, it's 99, 2000. But anyway. No one remembers it besides you and I because right. we saw these hideous Whoopi Goldberg advertisements yeah. all over the city. Right. So this, um, the, the whole idea with blockchain was an auditable ledger. Right. Now think about right now you have Carfax. That's a good analogy to this. If I want to see... If I crash my car, an audit gets put inside of a database mm. somewhere. You have your credit report, which is another auditable thing that you can get. Yeah. Obviously, that's more sensitive data. But the idea with blockchain being a way to exchange The immutable title, ledger. The ledger. Immutable ledger. Immutable, Please, get yes. it right. And what happens it now that this, this blockchain is next to 20 gigabytes in size now. Right. And this 20 gigabyte database, it takes so much processing power that if I want to exchange a, a single coin or a third of a coin with you, it takes uh, thousands of watts of power from computers all over the world to right. authenticate this. And that's Terrible for global warming. Terrible for global warming. It has to be warming. shut down. No, it can't be shut down. It needs to be made more efficient for this. But the, the people who have to make it more efficient, aren't they the developers who run these mines and they have no incentive to make it more efficient because they're making- Bingo. It's 30, a, 40 bucks a transaction. 12, 12 to uh, 17. A transaction. Per transaction, right. But now. if you want to jump the line, I heard you can and you pay more per transaction. Of course. Is that right? Yep. Yeah. With anything. Well, I don't know. Of course, everybody understands that. But you can pay 30 bucks and go first. Yep. And it's all about um, the, the, the keys are sent to the miners and the miners vote on mm. who will take that key in. Yep. And then the, the first one that gets it is uh, the winner of that. And Got it. It's, um, it's brilliant technology, but it's not a store value. It was meant to be a flues. And the fact that we're storing this uh, money in hopes and dreams and unicorn dust, um, that's what uh, yeah. that's what gets me. So I, when I meet friends at parties or people, friends of friends at parties, they say, um, oh, I'm a, I'm a Bitcoin investor. I'm like, oh, cool. Are you working on the technology to empower it? Are you working on uh, an exchange? No, 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 no. I'm gambling. No, well, that's what they say. I'm investing. Yeah. I go, no, you're not. And just to your point. They're gambling. All right. When we get back from this quick break, we're going to talk about the Telegram ICO because this was supposed to be the legit one that made all of this uh, legitimized and they're going to raise $2 billion in ICO. And I wonder if that is going to happen now or to what extent uh, when we get back uh, on this week in startups. So let me just take a moment to thank our friends at LinkedIn. Everybody knows hiring for your startup is arduous, hard, painful, and that's on the good days. On the bad days, it is soul crushing. Finding great people is hard. And the way you're going to do it is with LinkedIn. You may not know this, but LinkedIn has a jobs uh, product and it works great. LinkedIn is more than just the world's largest professional network. It is a better way to find talent. And these, these incredible candidates are just ready and waiting for you. 70% of the US workforce is already on LinkedIn, and you know that because you use LinkedIn. And even I keep my LinkedIn profile up to date, and I'm on LinkedIn every day. The social network on LinkedIn is amazing as well as our groups. I have a lot of reasons to be there, but the number one reason I'm there now is to find quality candidates. Businesses rate LinkedIn jobs 40% higher than the other jobs out there job boards out there at delivering quality candidates. And you know LinkedIn because you use it just asks the hundreds of thousands of businesses who have already posted jobs to LinkedIn jobs in the past year. And 22 million professionals view and apply to jobs on LinkedIn. And here's the punchline. I put a little dramatic pause there. Every week. 22 million a week. Take like 10 job boards, put them together. It's not even half that number. This is where all the action is. LinkedIn jobs is where all the great people are. So, again, your call to action, linkedin.com slash twist, linkedin.com slash twist, and you will get a $50 credit towards your first job post, linkedin.com slash twist, and get $50 towards your first, uh, get a $50 credit, terms and conditions apply, of course. And listen, let me tell you something, uh, LinkedIn has a video, you can upload videos now, 10 minute videos, and we started uploading videos from This Week in Startups, doing great. All right, let's get back to this amazing program. Um... 
Ari, you were going to make a point about the ICOs, and I teased a little bit about this Telegram ICO, Telegram, and now we're really becoming meta. Telegram is the anonymous chat platform <laughs> where people have pump, rooms called pump, where there are coordinated efforts of thousands of people to buy the same coin at the same moment, share it on Twitter, and then sell the coins. Although in the rooms they say you have to hodl, 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 but they're literally doing classic pump and dump scams, and the justification is, well, everybody knows it's just cryptocurrency that it's pumped and everybody's, you know, that's how cryptocurrency works. But literally, Telegram is the pump and dump place for anonymous global crypto shenanigans, and they're doing an ICO. What do you make of this? So it's not <clears throat> just the place for the pump and dump. It's, it, it is also the place where the enthusiasts go for legitimate uh, information conversations um it's the place sure. where where the discussions happen so yeah. if if in the if in the overall universe 90 percent of it is scam and 10 percent is real that ratio is probably similar on yeah. telegram um I, so i think you know there is a, a fantastic bull case to be made and a fantastic bear case to be made for telegram um and i i think the thing you have to get your head around is that this is a global social network messaging platform with a couple hundred million users that's growing hmm. um, and has never taken any outside money. It's been funded by the... Uh, the Dura Pop, Dura Pobble. Yeah. Yeah, um, Dura Lovely who, gentleman. Yeah. Uh, who, Very smart. Who, uh, sold a stake in v, can, VK. Uh, VK was Russia. essentially the Facebook of Russia. Right. And uh, that's where he, he's. Do you he's know how much, a, he, how much he made from his stake in that? The numbers were 200 okay. some odd million, yeah. but I don't know if that's a monopoly. Was he forced or, to sell that? Was that the story? Was that like Putin was like, we're going to take this? Um, Who knows? That's generally what happens with media in Russia. Yeah. Right? Okay. So, so nobody knows. But so well, he. And now they're operating out of Dubai. The, the Telegram idea, is. Telegram has a, an LLC. Now, Pavel's been traveling the world. He, yep. I met him uh, at TechCrunch and he's been at several events, but. Uh, um, but yeah, the, the ICO is Dubai based. Mm. Um, so, uh, yeah, they, they, what they said in their white paper is that, uh, I think their, their 2017 burn rate was about $70 million and, and Durov has been funding this and, and that number is going up. So eventually they're going to have to fund this thing. And they've said that they're not going to sell ads and they're not going to charge anyone. So there is no business model behind telegram. Uh, so this is a way to bring in money to fund telegram, core okay. telegram, uh, and, and then you sort of tangential, or I would say in parallel, you create the, the, the backbone of the potential infrastructure for this brand new blockchain-based network uh, where presumably, if it works, uh, you port people over from the existing Telegram 1.0 to the Telegram Future.0, which is based on blockchain. And there's you know, no centralized institution in the middle of it. And yet there's a vibrant, uh, it's a vibrant platform for earning currency by doing things that are valuable, which yeah. is sort of the idea behind crypto. So hypothetically, um, if 100 million people and growing are using this thing and are excited enough about the 2.0, 3.0 version of it. It's a way to uh, fund it. Yeah, it's a way to fund it. And, and it's, What do people get for those tokens, though? Are these Chuck E. Cheese so utility if, tokens? So if you they're not the, equity in the if company. You buy, if you buy in the ICO, what do you get? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. So there is no equity to be had. It right. Is you're you're buying tokens that if the network gets built, uh -huh. <laughs> takes off, yeah, uh, becomes vibrant, and becomes they may a market, becomes a marketplace for okay. the currencies with scarcity value, okay. uh, which is the critical piece to all cryptocurrencies. Um, then they appreciate. Hmm. They could appreciate purely on the speculation that this will happen. Look at it, the, the same thing that's been happening with XRP yep. uh, for Ripple, um, and they could not. Right? right, and so if I, I think what you see from an, from investors is. WhatsApp sold for $19 billion based on 400 million users several yep. years ago and basically no business model at the time. Um, Telegram is half that in size, growing quickly, and if now you can get a piece of the network at a fraction of that price that, that WhatsApp sold for, it's not a terrible bet for people who have billions of dollars to spend. Yeah. But his play is like WeChat, which WeChat in Asia has everything run through it. There's their hmm. own version of Uber yeah, you, within WeChat. Yeah, yeah, if you want to buy something in China, you use WeChat. Yep. It's all inside of a chat app. That functionality has been tried by Facebook. Mm -hmm. And so far, nobody wants to 
do Amazon or Apple Pay inside of Facebook Messenger. So this might be one of these technologies that works in one country but not another for whatever reason. And we've seen that before, where something gains hold in another country and the other country has a different custom on how to do it. Yep. And Telegram is global, right? So Telegram is global. global. Yeah. So, so the thing I don't get about this is I'm an investor for a living. I get equity. I get reports. I have downside protections. I have liquidation preferences or minimum returns. I have information rights. I have pro rata. You're an LP of my fund. Gadget guy, Dave Matthews. I mean, we, we have a certain structure to these things. And what I see happening in the ICOs is people get rid of all the downside protections that investors and all the discipline that investors have learned over five decades here in, in the Silicon Valley. Yeah. And they're starting over with no protections and no equity, no recourse. And the only thing that is going for this is the ability to trade the tokens, I guess, freely. So you have the ability to freely trade the cap table, which you don't have in private companies. Mm -hmm. I guess that is a double-edged sword. Like some people may sell in, on bad news as when, that, when they should be holding, right? Yep. So you lose that long-term you know, golden handcuffs. But also... Um, you tap into this global market of people who can't invest in the United States or don't know how, and who can't invest, frankly, in the stock market. Like if you're in India or China, like you can't be buying Netflix to the best of my knowledge or Google freely. It's a little bit more complicated. Yeah. Maybe if you're a rich person, you can move your money to Canada or something. This seems to me like taking the most unsophisticated and pent up demand in the world, the, those two things, unsophisticated and pent up, yeah. and then unleashing it on a group of grifters Yep. What is going to happen? Yep. This is like taking people who don't know which hands are more powerful than others in poker and sending them to play in the World Series of Poker main event yep. or the high rollers. You know, it's like these people don't know if a flush or a straight is the better hand and you're putting them at a table with all their money. The worst part about it is because it's a global currency, it's happening all the time, 24 <coughs> 7. And what's nice about the stock market is at three o'clock California time. Oh, uh, pause. Pause over. I can, Why is that important? Because I, I put a few grand in just to play. All right. As yeah. a technologist, I felt that I finally had to. It wasn't going away, mm -hmm. despite me shaking my fist and telling those kids to get off of my lawn. Yeah. They would not get off of my lawn. Right. So I put a few grand in, bought a few different currencies, did some trading, got a feel for it. Some of my friends are building apps in the space. Sure. You've invested through the fund in a, yeah. a great app for it. Well, we have two, Robinhood and Abra, to be clear, of okay. both. Uh, investments we made early on in the first rounds of those companies, or early rounds of those companies. Mm -hmm. First round in the case of Abra, and maybe early in Robinhood. So now I have two huge cryptocurrency investments yeah. while I'm going out telling people, pump the brakes. Right. A little awkward for me, but yeah. yeah. But but those those are both technologies that I think will be viable sure. even if cryptocurrency goes away. Yeah, non-custodial wallet. Yeah, yeah crypto is sort of a hedge for those companies as opposed to a corporate. Well, added feature. Be, or an added yeah. feature. Yeah. You know, it's like, hey, if people want to do this, we'll let you trade. But I got to tell you, being able to go check my wallet anytime I am have a low moment, and it's always trading 24-7, oh, yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah. give it a break. No, last night I was on my little chat group with some friends who are, you know, kind of like baller people, Silicon Valley, and we were just breaking oh, shots. I'm not on that group. <laughs> yeah, I said baller. It's a baller group of people. Oh, I, I thought you said balling. <laughs> no, no, not baller. Go. It's a baller group. <laughs> anyway, it's a, it's a private group with a bunch of people. Anyway, uh, a bunch of people, like a dozen people. But anyway... Um, a number of people are crypto bulls in that high profile, and we were just breaking chops. Like I was literally doing sketch drawings of the crypto thing, and like literally, what are these crypto investors like? I was just like, how much? How many? What's the over under on the number of Xanax this person has taken today? <laughs> Five. And like people were taking odds on greater than five or under five Xanax for this crypto investor. All right, when we get back from this final break, uh, I want to talk about the earnings again. Unbelievable earnings from the big uh, technology companies just up and down. The amount of cash, the amount of power, the amount of earnings, profits, uh, and the... Um, just simple audacity of Amazon, Apple, Google, Facebook, and Netflix, obviously reported a little bit earlier, has been truly staggering. And another staggering thing that you're going to want to check out is Squarespace. Squarespace. Thank you for that laugh on the segue. I just do, I do the best I can. But Squarespace is doing better than that. They're doing better than the best I can do by powering all of our websites. Go ahead, check out Launch Festival Sydney. Uh, check out Angel.University and Founder.University coming up on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday next week. 
We love Squarespace, and the reason we love it is we can take any of the cool ideas we have and turn it into a new website instantly, and we can showcase our work like a blog or content or conferences, sell products and services, and even promote physical and online businesses. Uh, all of our events, we use them. And why? Beautiful templates created by world-class designers available to us for such a low price that I keep telling them it's too cheap, but... They keep either lowering the price or adding features to this product over the years. It is incredible. You can customize the look and feel settings products with just a few clicks, and it is mobilized for it is optimized for mobile right out of the box. So you're not like, uh, oh my god, my website looks great on the desktop. It looks terrible on an iPad. But it looks great on a phone. It's going to look great everywhere. They've added so many features that literally it would take another 10 minutes for me to list them. But I will tell you, they've added 200 extensions in terms of getting domain names, which is great. So it's one-stop shopping. They have analytics that help you grow in real time. They do massive search engine optimization to help you beat out your competitors in the rankings. And it's free and secure hosting. You're not going to get hacked over there. It's just tremendous, the uh, amount of hosting they have, uh, the security. And it's 24-7 award-winning customer support. You can get somebody on the phone, so you're not going to be held hostage by your cousin's friend from college who built your website and then disappeared because they're going uh, to Coachella. Listen, I don't know how many times i got to tell you guys and gals out there, Squarespace is great. Squarespace.com uh, for a free trial. And when you're ready to purchase, please use the offer code TWIST, T-W-I-S-T, and you will save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. You can just make it yourself, and you can make it stand out with Squarespace. Again, use the promo code TWIST for 10% off. Thanks to our friends at Squarespace for making an amazing, amazing, amazing product. All right, Ari. Um, when I, one, of these, one of those days I was on uh, CNBC, I said, listen, I don't know, it was a year or two ago, I said... There's no reason Netflix can't have 250 million, I don't know if you remember, 250 million paid subscribers. Somebody laughed. It was ridiculous. They had 60 million at the time or something. Now they're at 113. And it seems like they're halfway, if my math is correct. I'm not perfect. That's just, uh, but uh, they're halfway to 250 million. And then on top of that, Facebook had a little bit of a drop in usage by Americans, but they blew past the earnings estimates um, Looks like 4.3 billion in profits uh, and revenue topped 12 billion dollars. Then, if you look at Apple, 260, 285 billion dollars in cash, uh, majority of which obviously comes from the iPhone franchise. But the iPhone franchise is doing, it seems, uh, just fine. And they're going to repatriate all this money and give a massive. Uh, apparently, all of it is going to come home, uh, which we talked about for two or three years on CNBC. Like, why can't Obama get this done? Amazon posted their hugest profit ever. This is a company that everybody derided for having no profits. When are they going to show a profit? When are they going to show a profit? They broke uh, Bezos' chops for two decades, and then all of a sudden he drops $2 billion on people's heads. Um, and AWS revenue is now over $5 billion in a quarter. It's ridiculous. And Google uh, <laughs> is uh, jumped revenue 24% uh, and uh, just unbelievable performance. What do you make of all this? Yeah, AWS is now the fourth biggest software, uh, enterprise software company Amazing. in the world. Hidden uh, inside I, of the people who yeah. bring you your milk and books. Yeah. And today, literally today, I opened up a two pound bag of ground Amazon fresh, white labeled Colombian coffee, and it was delicious. And I just looked, I looked at it, I just laughed. That's home turf. They're, they're, I, they're Beating up Starbucks. And, they're uh, literally, <laughs> what, they're, they, I don't think they have two or 3,000 of the Amazon Basics brands now. Uh, I mean, it's literally everything coming from them soon. I think it's just going to be an Amazon version. Like it's going to be like literally Amazon the Amazon. Amazon batteries, Amazon, Amazon diapers. Everything yeah. is going to be just Amazon cups, everything on top of the cables. What do you, what's, what's your take on just, just massive performance? Yeah, well, I, so I do want to, you know, I think it's interesting, you know, we go from talking about crypto and blockchain to the giant five companies. And, and what is, you know, one of the really fascinating trends for me right now covering tech is there's just this fundamental divide between those two themes. Like if there's one platform of the future that the big five companies, and by that I mean Apple, Amazon, Facebook, Microsoft, Google. and Google, thank you. Um, uh, one thing they're not doing, it's anything or much on blockchain. Um, zero. Basically zero. Uh, you, know, you have some AWS and, and Azure projects where they'll host 
blockchain. I'm sure somebody's working on their 20% time, the Alphabet Corporation, yeah, yeah, yeah. which and, I refuse and, to call. It's Google. And then we'll leave and do something. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but, but, you know, the, the notion of uh, a decentralized network is anathema to these companies, right? So it is... Why is that? Well, because they are the centralized institutions that control everything, right? right. I mean, if you, you've talked about this before. If you have a, 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 a blockchain-based social, net, social network with a couple billion people, there's no Facebook in the middle of it. Yeah. There doesn't need to be. No. Um, and, and so if you can create that, which Telegram is thinking of, um, do you, what happens to that company that's worth $600 billion? Um, Theoretically, so, it would evaporate? Uh, it just... Go away? It's, a, it's an interesting topic, right? Yeah. I mean, what, what, like, Facebook is not a particularly diversified company. Uh, right. It's 85% mobile advertising revenue that is because they're sending you ads while you're on your phone, right? It's pretty pretty straightforward. Um, if you're on another, if you're on any other application, or if you're certainly on a decentralized network with, you know, th there is no Facebook there. Hmm. So, you know, we're not talking about next year, five years, we may not, we may not be talking about ever, but there is a good reason why, uh, if you look at those five companies, they're all over AI, they're all over VR, they're all over big data, they're all over cloud. They're Audio, all, they're, they're assistance. All, yeah, they're all over everything. Mobile. Where, 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 you know, why it's probably pretty hard to find great startups now. Yeah. But, um, no, we still the, find them, but it's, find, it's, yeah. uh, they're a little more competitive. Yeah, finding white space is more challenging, right? Yeah. Um, because those companies are doing everything. They're, they're not quicker. doing much on blockchain. Yeah. Um, so I just why just, uh, because of because it is uh, the antithesis it, it is, of is, what their existence is, it, is. Not only is it disruptive to their business, it is it is an existential threat to their business. Got right? it. It's one thing. It's so one this thing would for, be their crossing the chasm moment. Yeah, it's one thing for Facebook to go out and buy WhatsApp because 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 traffic is going to WhatsApp and we need that traffic, but that money still filters up to Facebook. Yeah. How do you go out and buy something where there's no money filtering up? Right, yeah, I mean, buying Bitcoin is not going to do anything for them. The Bitcoin, yeah. Nobody with this huge $150 billion market cap or whatever for Bitcoin or $300 billion, whatever it is right now, um, it, nobody gets that. Yeah. Except maybe, I guess, there's some early wallets that theoretically get it. Why do you, why do you think, gadget guy Dave Matthews, uh, we do not see those major companies doing crypto blockchain projects and will we see amazon create their own cryptocurrency at some point yeah i think when when he's got uh, five billion in revenue with people having private data which is how most companies generate their business right it's intellectual property it's code it's all held very close very tight so there has been no killer app for blockchain Got it. Now, IBM, when you go to the trade shows at the IBM booth, sure. IBM's all about the cloud now. They're all about services. And they have... Um, like Watson. Watson is sure. intelligent, so that's their, their processing engine. Yeah, it's they, like their AI in the cloud. Got at it. At CES this year, they had their quant computer, which is sure. their, their super... That's a big deal. Yeah, big deal on that. Why is that a big deal? Explain it to it, civilians listening. Right. So the way computers work today is there's a bus, and that bus takes one bit at a time, mm -hmm. parallel. So there's uh, um, uh, the computer input and output is the bottleneck. Quant can take large math and uh, transmit mo um, um, state electrons in. It's, it's a whole new paradigm of computing. And the state can be one, zero, or neither. Yes. Is that right? Yes. Is that like one it of the big innovations? Extra, the, the, the third beetle or the fifth, <laughs> yeah. uh, the fifth beetle from yeah. Saturday Night Live. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, um, IBM does have brochureware for blockchain project. Now, ah. I think that's Brochureware just, being... That's a good way to put it. Yeah. Right? So, they, they, say so that, they basically say, hey, we got this coming and you should totally get on board, totally but it doesn't exist on. yet. So we IBM, used to call it vaporware. Yeah. But for IBM, it's a deck that they show. They have a, a pod at their booth of all the IBM services. Now, when you drill down and talk to them about how they're achieving this, um, they have to get to a next level person. Like, they're not the right person. The booth babe can't talk to you about this. Sure. Um, but this is no different than the iced tea company that had their ICO or their chat that we're going to use. So it's a little bit of window dressing. It's not here yet. But they may, like Watson, eventually get there. Because Watson was one of those things, in fairness to them where they were talking about Watson, 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 but you couldn't use it. And then I've had three or four startups who are actually using Watson for like image. Uh, and Alphabet has TensorFlow, which they brought yeah. out of Google into its own So maybe company. starting slowly. So, but IBM is also among the, you know, we, we did this analysis a couple of weeks ago, among the 10 most valuable tech companies. 
uh, IBM is the only one that investors are just have just given up on. Yeah. Um, the other nine, um, you know, starting with the the big five that we mentioned, then going to Cisco, Oracle, those have all had tremendous rallies. Um, you know, uh, out, outperforming the market, which has done quite well. IBM is is basically flat down a few percent in the last twelve mm -hmm. months. Um, IBM doesn't have much to lose by promoting blockchain as a, a service. Uh, they need they need to have this sort of um, this portfolio of next generation things to even be in the conversation. Uh, but uh, you know, I, this, the story we did was IBM hasn't been this unimportant to the stock market in forty years. Yeah, uh, it's it's uh, its position in the S and P and the Dow is just tanked. But it's still got revenue, and oh yeah, you know, like it's many of these company. companies, like you do a little. A, a, a purchase here, a purchase there. You know, you never know. They could come right back. Uh, but none of them are doing any crypto. I. It seems to me crypto is not the thing. Blockchain yeah. is the thing. Right, but I don't. There's no application. So this is one there's of the no things that I have been saying for five years, which is, what is the killer app of all this? Aside, if you put speculation aside, um, I only thing I see is store of value, which to me seems very real. If you're in Venezuela or one of these countries, the store of value of being able to get out of your native currency and just have something like even just owning gold, but you will get arrested if you try. I saw a story the other day, like a, a, some people in Japan were trying to move like $200,000 worth of gold bricks. They were putting it in the bathroom on a commercial flight, hiding it in the bathroom on a commercial flight in like one of the storage spots wow. for then another native person to pick up on the same, on a different, same plane, different route. Later on, they got busted, of course, for trying to smuggle in six gold bars. Um, but that, I think we'd all agree, store of value does have value to those people who are trying to get out of their, yeah. you know, funny money. Transfer, sort of, yeah, there's some transfer going on, right? Anything outside of that that's interesting? I mean, I, I think there are a lot of things that are interesting. They're just years away, right? I think, like, health data, um, the ability to, to have your, you know, privately encrypted health data where you're the only one with a key to it and you can unleash it in various ways. So if, if you know, your data would be useful for some sort of clinical study, um, yeah. you have a way to get that from point A to point B where only you and point B can it. see it and you can be paid in some sort of, some sort of value. It. So here's my... 20 blood tests I've taken in my life by year, by date, have added if you're trying to do some but HIPAA, study. But HIPAA, which was a project that was, what, 2002, 2003, the Health Insurance Portability Act? And HIPAA, Privacy Act. Privacy Act, yes. HIPAA was supposed to enable this transfer of data. That didn't work. Google Health didn't go anywhere, yeah. if yeah. you think about that. So this, um, and then Venezuela has a crude oil crypto, yep. speaking of that, that they're trying Venezuela to- Venezuela has a crude oil crypto? That's right. So they say they're going to sell- um, a crypto based upon the crude oil. Now, the U.S. government has come back and said that um, this goes against the U.S. sanctions. You know, this isn't a, uh, we, we, you cannot invest in this crypto. So finally, we have mm. something that's actually backed by more than um, hopes and dreams. <laughs> mm. Jackie, I see Emmy Warren, producer Jackie says, while we're on this topic, it's interesting that Apple is saying they will go to cash zero. What is that about? Oh, that's they're going to spend all the money on startups, which, um, you know, the, all what? the money, the repatriation of money. Is going to startups. That's what they said. Oh, yeah. And in a related announcement, they're going to give all that cash. To New Air. No. Oh. They're giving 1% to New Air and 99% to <laughs> the uh, angel investor, Jason Calacanis, to deploy in 18,000 startups. <laughs> 285, <laughs> $6 billion in cash. I mean, if you oh. just take their cash value, uh, oh, here we go. Know, they're valued at like two and a half times cash, their, their market cap. Um, they're like two take, and a half times cash. Take, 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 yeah, take uh, you makes know, no sense. Rip out all revenue. <laughs> Unbelievable. Apple's vow to put 163 billion in cash to work could ease the blow for shareholders during sell-off. Apple uh, flexes power massive cash holdings on Thursday in a bid to dampen Wall Street's disappointment as iPhone sales. The company plans to use nearly all of its 163 billion in net cash hinting more stock buybacks, dividends, or acquisitions. Yeah, they should just keep... I, I said this years ago. If they repatriate all this money, it is going to create an M&A bonanza. Like, Whole Foods was just the start. Mm -hmm. Whole Foods is going to look like the number 10 on the list of acquisitions yeah. in a couple of years. Uh, we're going to see such a huge amount of... I mean, right now, it, with all that money, why not buy Tesla? Why not buy yeah. Uber or Lyft? Or, I mean, is the, this going to be before Trump is impeached? Or I, My prediction well, here, is he's I think, going okay, to so quit So let's make the segue that. to Trump then, because we're sitting here on the day, the, the nonsense... Release the memo, Jason. They released the memo. Hashtag release the memo. It's a big nothing burger. Uh, <laughs> but the truth is, the ta this tax break is flooding 
the market with cash, flooding it, Thank which you. is going to create. Yep. And I am no, I, I'm not a fan of Trump. I did not vote for Trump. I would never vote for Trump. I believe that this Russian thing is very real. To what extent? We'll find out. Putting all that aside, my own political beliefs. I think if he doesn't get impeached or do something incredibly stupid to get himself impeached, obstruction of justice being probably top of the list, this guy's going to get three terms. Because if you print money and allow all these companies to repatriate their cash, and here's the tech angle. Apple saying that they're going to build all these factories here and create all these jobs here. Why didn't they do that under Obama? Exactly. So here you have Tim Cook pledging to do all this after the tax cut. So Trump gives Apple what he wants. Was it what is it? Ten percent number bring to repatriate. So instead of fifteen, I think it is. Whatever. It is. whatever yeah, I mean, it's a massive tax holiday. Yeah. I think it's fifteen is the number. Apple is going to get, and the, the, this, re, this creating of jobs, repatriation, I think this is going to get him reelected because people will secretly go into, I know this is very scary for people listening, the eco- it's the economy, it's jobs. That's what it's always been about is money. And getting $1.5 trillion in stimulus to do the infrastructure bill on top of the repatriation, on top of this tax holiday for rich companies is just... He's doing everything that is going to create jobs and flood the market. He's going to get reelected because people who hate him, who are rich or powerful or are benefiting from this, are going to tell everybody they're voting Democrat and they're going to go into the booth and vote Trump, even though they hate him. What do you think of my theory, Ari? Uh, it's, I mean, that's a pretty outlandish theory. Um, you know, is is the is repatriation unquestionably good for the U.S. economy? Uh, it seems so on the surface. What could um, be the downside? Um, Giving you know, up that fifteen, the twenty points of uh, tax. Well, that we would never get. Do how do they use it? I mean, are they building factories? Are they employing people who used to be coal miners and used to be you know used to work on the even auto- if it's just dividends and M and A, it's going to get circulated here. It's monetary velocity. Money yeah, gets but, spent. but sandwiches, real yeah, estate, whatever. Uh, you, you, so, so I mean, do you? Do you so it's, then, then it, it filters down into employment elsewhere. Is that? It's there is zero downside because it's a hundred percent downside that it's kept in Ireland or Dubai or wherever else because or the Caymans because we're guaranteed that that money is not going to be spent here. At least if it's here, there's a chance. So if ten percent of it or fifty percent of it gets spent here on anything, it's accretive to the U.S. economy. There's it's indisputable that that's the case. Yeah. Um, yeah. So. I, the, the the benefits to the economy seem pretty evident, assuming they play out. I think it's still very much up. I you know I, I would put uh, less than twenty five percent chance on that on that playing out. That so way. people they're, might like a Tim Cook might say they're going to do all this stuff, but then when we check on them, uh, like you know many yeah. times these companies will say they're going to do something, then not. I mean they they just like what are they going to use that cash for? I mean it's like they, dividends. Yeah, but to shareholders, you can only pay so much in dividends. Okay, right? but it, they could give a huge one dividends, yeah. which then reads to people investing in businesses. Yeah. Um, sh- if people if they buy back stock, it increases the stock. That stock is in every Apple stock is in every single four hundred one k in the planet. Right, it's one of the highly held stocks. So therefore, retirees get more money that they can then, because there'd be no inheritance tax, give to their kids, which their kids can then buy houses or cars or educations or pay down their debt. So all this money is going to flow. And it's going to flow in any number of ways. Yeah. I mean, I think that these companies will bring back a percentage, maybe a significant percentage of, of, of their... I don't think they're going to bring back all. Um, Apple said they'll bring Apple, back all. Apple has said they'll yeah. bring back all. App, yeah. App, Apple's playing somewhat of a PR game here. Sure. Um, but uh, they're... You know, They'll make acquisitions to the degree that it, that they find them beneficial, but these and they'll make U.S. Money, acquisitions but, which they previously could not make. But they you can't buy Tesla. Them, they could have made them in stock, right? Yeah, um, but they wouldn't have. If you had, they would have used that money to make international acquisitions. But now that it's here, and they got eighty-five cents in the dollar instead of sixty or fifty-five cents, whatever it would want to be. The idea of buying Tesla or Uber or Lyft or Airbnb or Dropbox, like these ten to seventy-five billion dollar companies, seems pretty plausible. Yeah, I mean, for in, but I think in most of those cases, it's not a lack of capital that's kept them from making acquisitions. It's but a, a it's a cultural it's embedded in the culture of these uh, of, of Apple not to make big acquisitions. But in a cash bonanza, people get a little bit frisky. It's like all of a sudden you're at the poker yeah. table and somebody gives you a hundred grand. You're I'll like, ah, oh, maybe I'll play yeah. more hands. I'll believe it when I see it. I'll I think they're going to yeah. play more hands. That's my. What do you think, Gadget Guy? They gotta, they, they're going to spend it. They're they're probably not yeah. going to build factories here. Although, 
They did make the that makes um, no sense. the Apple uh, uh, was it the toilet paper tube that was the uh, the yeah, pro the, 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 Mac, the Mac Pro Mac Pro which was a disaster. What a terrible yeah. decision. Yeah. It's like not upgradable. It's barely upgradable. It looked cool, but yeah. they that just got to make a tower. It was made in the U.S. So yeah, all right, I can make a flamethrower here. Absolutely. All right, we uh, we have you here, Gadget Guy Dave Matthews, and one <laughs> of the things that you are great at is showing us exactly the history of failed devices. Yes. So here we have from my fail lab. This from is your the fail lab. Three com. You might use three com with do your. Do you have pump. a lab with all this? I do. You might have a Palm Pilot. Is it like a museum or no? You carry? Yeah, Why don't we open a museum, you and I? Okay. I'll fund it. I'm good with that. This is my idea. Oh, wait, hold on. You'll do what? I'll fund it. Are you repatriating some money? I'm repatriating some money, yes. You, what, what's your From cash holding yeah. I, My dream in life. I, actually, I'll tell you. I dialed back a year ago. I was on the setting of 10, which is majority equities on Wealthfront. And a year ago, so I missed a little bit of the run-up, I dialed it to three. And I'm telling you right now, I'm going to dial it to one in terms of equity exposure on Wealthfront. And I am going to put 10 or 20 or 30% of my holdings into gold, literally gold, uh, because I believe that this monetary policy and the stock market and the bull run is going to end. Mm. And I don't know if it's ending in three years or three months or five years, but it's ending and it's ending in the foreseeable future. And when it ends, it is going to be brutal. So I, I think there's only two choices. I, I may just buy the four stocks that I think are going to be the lasting ones, because I play this game with my friends. What are the four stocks you would own if you, or the, actually the way we play it is, you, can, you have to put all your money into two stocks. Which two? Wow. Doesn't that undermine your whole theory that the economy is going to be flush with cash and everyone's going to? I do believe that's going to happen. And mm -hmm. then I believe what will happen after that. So I'm thinking two mm -hmm. steps ahead, like a, mm -hmm. like a Kasparov. Yeah. All right. And my Kasparov tells me, like, he because he thinks two moves ahead. You understand? Mm -hmm. We're all thinking one move. But Kasparov yeah. and Trump, doing, two, three yeah, yeah. moves. We're doing 3D chess here. This Trump. is 3D chess, all right? We all do one move. Kasparov does two, and Trump does three moves ahead, all right? So I'm thinking post the money going in, what's going to happen? Because mm -hmm. I think the money going in is priced in. Ah, see? What if he really is just that much smarter than all of us? And, that mean, would be incredible. <laughs> if he's like, it would be great if, like, one day he gets up there and he's like, all right, listen, guys, let me just explain to you the master plan. He starts talking normal. Yeah, All right, here's what I did. I created seven, a character called Trump, and I made this character in it's 1985. And, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and then I put all of my money from real estate secretly into Amazon and Google, and I rented it up in Apple. Now what I've done is, in order to trap Putin in a trap, I sent my son to do this, but we've actually caught Putin. And now we're going to be able to get Putin and Kim Jong-un out of office, because we've now we're going to do the coup d'etat and I murdered them. And now we have peace and all nukes are going away. And thank Don, you. I'm Donald Trump. And, and, <laughs> Drop the microphone. And Don Jr. wins the Nobel Prize. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. It's so great. Bizarre world. All right. Guys, you guy Dave right. Matthews. Yep. Show us. So here's but here's the thing. I want to collect all this stuff and make a museum here. OK. You know, there's the Museum of Computers. Oh, yeah. yeah. Whatever. Yeah, the That's QCAT not. is in that. I don't know if you okay. knew that. Well, here's what I want to do. I want to make Dave and Jason's. Mm. Like graveyard of tech. Yes. And we'll charge like this uh, ice cream museum. Oh, and yeah. And you can go to the yeah. graveyard of tech. Yeah. We'll sell like 100 tickets selfies. a day for 50 bucks. And you take selfies yeah. with these Amazing. horrible products yep. that you, yes. creator I've, of the most horrible product, yes. are uniquely I'm, qualified I'm to handicap. I'm uniquely the curator of this museum. You, you're the curator of failure. So yes. go ahead so, and curate. So, so Ari, which PDA do you use? How do you keep track of your... Uh, your calendar do you use a Poseidon or do you use the Palm Pilot or what oh hold on I just yeah. slipped back into 1997 sorry I'm, I'm, I'm glad you actually said Palm Pilot otherwise I would have had no idea what you were talking about yeah so back in the day you would carry a device called a Palm Pilot where sure. you had to actually learn a new language called graffiti there was a one stroke alphabet yes you remember this alphabet of course and they had all these devices that uh, came from US robotics who used to make modems when you used to dial into the internet but this was their final product that came out of that era of the Palm Pilot. This is the Audrey. They came in several colors. The Audrey. The Audrey. But it says E-R-G-O on the top. Yeah, is that so, the company name? So Ergo was probably the the, yeah. the, the, the stealth project. And it says 3Com at the bottom. Yeah, what is 3Com? So 3Com 3Com made networking equipment. Oh, 3Com was a company. Oh, yeah. 
They made Massive. Ethernet and token ring things. So here we go. We've yeah. got it framed up perfectly. So this, uh, the knob on the bottom is how you would change um, your internet web pages, internet radio. Wait, wait it's a knob? You, you, this is a dialing knob. Oh, this, my God. It's turns. like a volume control. Yeah. Like, Except what? it didn't do volume. It has two speakers on the top. Oh my it has God. a stylus, which oh. you needed to use to write wait, on it's it. it's a clear stylus? That looks like the dark crystal or something. It gets even better, Jason. What you could leave 2000s, yeah. Y2K. You could leave messages for your family. It would sync multiple Palm Pilots. So you could have a common <gasps> calendar. This is before Google Calendar, everything that was online. Unbelievable. This was a tethered syncing device. And if I left Ari a message, it would be, what's your favorite color, Ari? Uh, we'll call it red. Okay, so the stylus would glow red. For, <gasps> oh, for, my God. And if so it was G one so for elegant. Jason, it would be yellow. I also love the uh, design decision to go with... Um, the Exorcist Puke Pea Soup Green. <laughs> there were several for, colors. There's yeah, green. But no, I would pick Exorcist Puke Pea Green. Yeah, my buddy Jim Louderback has every one of the colors of these, so um, oh he, he should have maybe a rotation in oh, our Jim's, Museum of yeah. Fail. But think about this screen display. The iPad Mini, it's the same size. Amazing. So you can see it's a little bit thinner, just slightly thinner. <laughs> slightly thinner. <laughs> yeah, if we got the profile shot, that would be good. Can you power this thing on? I do have not only the, I don't have the power supply with me, but I uh. not only have a power supply with it, but this has an RJ11 jack on it to Ooh. get it onto the internet via modem. And I have Nicely hacked done. an wow. ethernet adapter. So I have one of oh, the um, rare... Genius. Ethernet connected, 3Com Ergo, Audrey. I mean, with let's three do, names, it's like this. serial let's killer do our stuff. Let's failed technology graveyard. Yes. Like literally like a horror show of tech. I think this would be great. <laughs> if you come to Silicon Valley and we'll sell coffee, all right? Oh, yeah, we have your robot for this. We have put the coffee robot in yeah. there. And uh, we literally just lit, put all the horrible... Actually, we could do this at Cafe X is now on Market Street. Okay. We could... On the wall, put Dave and Jason's Fail Technology Graveyard, amazing. like a mini installation, like yeah. a roaming installation. Like Just put like 20 things on the wall. Like All right, it. listen, this has been amazing. And uh, yeah, the, the, the great punchline would be like Trump would be talking about like his grandmaster plan on this like great voice. And then he starts speaking Korean. And like we put the <laughs> subtitles and he's like, my brother, Kim Jong-un, your reign is over. But we have uh, your we have a billion dollars in the Cayman Islands and a mansion for you to move to in exile for giving up. And we're going to send you all the new re latest releases of every movie <laughs> early. So you get to see Star Wars before everybody. This would be me if I was. And then he starts speaking like Arabic and he talks to Saudi Arabia about human rights. And then he switches to Russian. And then he tells Putin that, by the way, the security is downstairs from the, from the KGB and they're going to be arresting you. Sounds like a South Park episode. <laughs> Finny. <laughs> Finny. All right. Listen, everybody. Thank you so much, uh, Ari Levy. Everybody join his um, his email list. He's got a great email list where he uh, talks about his projects. I don't know how you sign up to it. How do you sign up to that? Is that like a secret thing? No, you, you can just email me, ari.levy okay. at nbcuni.com. Okay. Uh -huh. And uh, you can follow him, Levy News, on the Twitter. And Gadget Guy Dave Matthews is GGDM on the Twitter. Everywhere. Founder of Instagram. New Air, uh, spelt incorrectly, A-E-R, New Air. And uh, if you hold Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies, all I'll say is if you're up massively, and I said this at 19,000, and it's a video now where when it hit 19,000, I said, please, just sell some amount, half, a third, and buy a house. If you're that far up, yeah. or in Brock Pierce's case, buy Puerto Rico. Buy an island. Buy an island. There's no mean, power. It's really cheap. It's fine. Yeah. I mean, you might not have, but he can build a nuclear, Brock Pierce has so much money now. Well, they want to be he on. He could buy a nuclear reactor. <laughs> yeah, but he's on a Superfund side. If he takes over the military base, there's probably some. Is that what he's doing? There's probably some radiation <laughs> in the ground. I love Brock Pierce. Fire that up. <laughs> I love Brock Pierce. I, uh, <laughs> all right. I just want to make sure everybody knows that Launch Festival is taking a year off from San Francisco. Uh, because I'm sick and tired of dealing with the real unions. Estate. You can't get real estate. And here. I can't get a location. So I'm taking a year off. We're taking a year off here at launch. And we're doing it in Sydney. LaunchFestivalSydney.com. And Jackie and I are looking for speakers to come. Here's the uh, sales pitch to the great speakers, my friends. Uh, you get yourself to Sydney. You speak at the event in front of 1,000 people. And we're giving away 1,000 tickets right now to founders in Sydney and the area. Or if you want to come from the U.S., you can get one of those tickets. LaunchFestivalSydney.com. First 1,000 tickets free. We're going to sell a couple hundred tickets to people who want to come to um, the dinners and whatnot. But if you're a speaker and you're not creepy and you're legit uh, and you're not weird... I am renting a boat, and I'm going to dive the Great Barrier Reef immediately following the conference. So, Dave, I don't know if you, you scuba dive. I uh, snorkel. Okay, perfect. Yeah. Uh, if Low you impact. want to, have you ever 
dove the Great Barrier Reef. I haven't, and you have to go before it dries up because it's dying. They say slowly. it's coming back a little bit, no, but uh, you know. Anyway, the fact is, fake news. They said Sydney said we want to have you here, so we're bringing the conference there. Amazing. Go ahead and go to launchfestivalsydney.com, and if you're a baller speaker who wants to come, you get yourself there. I take you scuba diving on the Great Barrier Reef. Thank you. June nineteenth and twentieth. I'd love to have you there with yeah, me. I appreciate the, um, uh, the Ari. Miles. I know you're not going to come. I would invite you, but you wouldn't come. Uh, I, I would come if uh, you didn't have kids if, well, and a job and a would, life. Yeah, or if they would pay for me to go. Well, here's the thing. Yeah. Dave yeah, has no kids, yeah. no life, no job, and no yeah. life. So yeah. he's he's in. I don't even have to <laughs> ask him if he's in. I just assume yeah. he's in. We'll see <laughs> you what all do you there. Do with your time anyway. Yeah. Oh just God, he fixes out. Vespas. <laughs> he, I, honestly, I know what he does. Mm -hmm. If you crash your Vespa mm -hmm. and you put it on sale, mm -hmm. he lowballs you for two hundred dollars cash. He I goes and picks it up yeah. and then he rebuilds yeah. it. Yeah. That's and what he does. Latest, I'm just finishing a seventy three nine eleven. It's beautiful. Yeah, last night we were at the Peterson Automotive Museum. Oh, with is that here in L A? It's in L A. In L A. And beautiful museum. We had. Millions of dollars of Porsches. It's on my Instagram mm. Um, mm. slash GGPM. Here's what I want. I want to get a 1973 Mustang yeah. convertible. The Mach. Mach, whatever. But I want to put batteries in it and make it into oh, cool. an electric car. Can yeah, you do that? We can do that. Uh, you can? And then Elon. We'll do it at Burning Man. We'll debut your car at Burning Man. Okay, sounds good. And uh, You heard it here first, folks. <laughs> thank you to the New South Wales government and the Department of Industry and Business Event Sydney for helping us do Launch Festival Sydney. We can't, can't wait to go down under and put a shrimp on the Barbie. I'm, wow. I'm SW. joking. <laughs> Literally, people in Australia love they it. They love that. They love it when yeah. you make that shrimp on the Barbie mm -hmm. mentioned. And to um, all of uh, my Kiwi friends, uh, you know, make the flight. Come from New Zealand. They're already there. To oh, Sydney. Kiwi friends, okay. Kiwi friends. Yeah. All right. We'll see you all next time on This Week in Bye-bye.